Ricky Walden, vastly talented player, looked like he was going, not nowhere, but going to be ending up in the middle of the pack as far as a snooker player until he won the 2008 Shanghai Masters Championship against Ronnie O'Sullivan and all of a sudden he raised his stock. Yeah, it's given him a lot of confidence against the, the top players and to beat Ronnie O'Sullivan in any final uh, must have been a great achievement for him, you know, for himself and for his confidence in that. One of these players that scores very, very quickly, quick around the table, nice to watch as well and he's improved immensely, hasn't he, over the last few years. He's always been dangerous, he's always been very, very good. Now he knows he's a winner. There's a big difference between thinking you can win and hoping you're going to win, between actually then winning and knowing that you can do it. He's beat arguably the best player we've seen in a final, and now he knows he can do it. He's got quite a distinctive style. Yep. He's got two bent legs. Yep. Not many players have been that successful with two bent mm -hmm. legs, although well, arguably there are a few of them. And he's got this set up position where his head is very tilted quite forward. His uh, technique certainly isn't what you'd call orthodox, you know, he's not a he's not out of a book player, he doesn't play snooker by numbers, he plays snooker by feel, yeah. by instinct. He doesn't hit many straight shots. In golfing terms, he's hitting a lot of shots round the trees. He's not playing necessarily down the fairway onto the green two putts. He plays a lot of shaping shots. He plays most shots with a lot of run inside. And so if things aren't quite right, he can miss anything at any time, but when it's right, he's very right. If you're going to pick holes in him, because that quite like doing that, <laughs> uh, if you were going to, you'd immediately go to the, the stance. Well, if you're going to build a skyscraper, your foundations need to be strong. And with all his natural talent, I think his potential will always be a little bit underlined because of those weaknesses in his technique. That, that stance and the, the sort of movement that is there a little bit will will be a problem but he makes up for it with with, talent. with all yeah, of his talent yeah, right. you can't beat that is he running out of time in the game is there going to be a new generation overtake him no i don't think so i think he's young enough still I think he, he's one of those players as well as he's getting older he's, he's sort of finding a lot more form than he did when he was sort of early 20s or whatever he believes he can play all aspects of snooker and he can he, he's always been a very very dangerous player but now he's got that belief of him being a winner that makes him very, very dangerous. No, I don't think so. It's quite an old-fashioned view, I think, to actually, to, the amount of techniques that are out there to look at that and think that's a weakness, you know. As long as you stay still on the shot and the top half is good, keep queuing's nice and smooth, I think that's the most important thing. So that's what I sort of base my game on, really. I think that's a pretty accurate comment, you know, I'm not, I'm not proud of that fact, I suppose. I'd like to be a little bit straighter, you know, and not miss as many easy balls out there at times, but, but that's what it is, that's, the way, that's what I base my game on, you know, I do play on a lot of feel and I do play on a lot of touch and when things are right, I know I can go all the way and win an event. No, I don't think so. There's a lot of players who are getting older and, and getting better, you know. I, I feel as though I can learn, I've learned a lot already and I feel as though I can improve with that as well. My safety's improved. My craft of the game's improved, my experience is there, you know, and I'm still scoring okay at the moment, so things aren't, um, things aren't at panic stations just yet.